with over 400 celebrity interviews and tons of pop culture nerdiness, Too Opinionated is a safe haven for your inner geek. Find us at MeisterCon.com or on YouTube under MeisterCon Pod. And please subscribe. It would really help us out. Thanks, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition to Opinionated. So excited today. I've got actor Brian Doe Chua. Is that, did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. That's exactly it. That's exactly it. <laughs> <laughs> I said it and I was like, that's not right. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. It's good. I appreciate it, man. Now, uh, Brian, uh, thank you so much for coming on the, the show. I'm, I'm a big fan of yours because you voice so many characters on the cartoon side. And I'm nerdy. You know, I grew up probably like you did watching Saturday morning cartoons. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a I'm a little jealous of the voice acting stuff, although I know you do the regular acting, too, and you're great at it. But thanks. Yeah. I want to talk about the uh, the cartoon stuff along with the regular acting. But before we do any of that, tell me a little bit about, you know, what got you into acting? What made you want to become an actor? Well, on the topic of the Saturday morning cartoons. I mean, that's what I grew up watching too, right? And yeah. and so I I was very much involved in that world from a really early age. And then I found out in my early teens that this was an actual career path. <laughs> like they're not computer generated voices. They're not, you know, they don't live in my TV. What's going not on? Not yet, anyway. Oh boy, <laughs> it's a whole different conversation. Um, yeah, and I I learned that it was a career path, and and. It was around the same time that I was exploring drama in in school, because uh, I was really young when I realized that this was a, a career path, and I decided to really focus on the voice acting side of things for cartoons, video games, anime, all that stuff. Um, and so basically, I did a lot of high school theater. I had a really crappy desktop microphone um, at home, uh, <laughs> re-recording software, and I would just practice. I would record myself. I would listen back. I would imitate, and I would spend hours just just doing that um just kind of work on my own thing before uh before jumping in professionally and then i got lucky uh, an agent came to my high school honestly and started talking about what it would look like to to work in on camera and yeah. I pulled her aside at the end and i said do you rep voice actors for animation and she goes i don't but my friend does uh you should send me your stuff uh and i'll pass it along and I went, great, no problem. And then I realized I have nothing. I have no <laughs> nothing. And so my theater teacher at the time in theater 11, it was grade 11, I was like about 16 or 17 years old at that point, helped me craft like my first acting resume with just all of the high school theater. And, and you know, I had done a couple of like little audio drama things um, as well. And so we put it yeah. all on a resume. I recorded with the crappy desktop microphone and the free recording software, a little sample. I sent it off and I got a message within a month. And basically I just started auditioning from there. And then a couple of years later, I booked my first job. Um, so it's awesome me a though. It took a couple of years for you to actually book the first one. Yeah. Yeah, it did. But yeah. a lot of people would given up by then. Yeah. Well, it takes time. Right. Like yeah. it, it, it takes time. And, and I think, you know, I, I kind of made this realization a couple of years ago, people just tend to quit before they get good. Like, yeah, it, it just takes time. Right. I always say to people, if they want to get into this, like give it five years, at least give it five yeah, years. I, I really like it because podcasting is kind of like that. A yeah. lot of people, I mean, millions of people do it, mm. but most of them don't stick it out. Cause you know, there's so many out there that if you want to actually make it into something you gotta take the time to get eyes on it and that's not something that happens in weeks or months usually usually it's years yeah it just takes time because people need yeah. to get to know you right and and you got to keep working on your craft and artistry at the same time right. so yeah so when you were growing up what were your cartoons uh it was actually it was a lot of dc animation Okay. Uh, it was Justice League. It was Teen Titans. It was a lot of Transformers. I uh, grew up watching a lot of Dragon Ball Z, a lot of anime. Um, so I'm guessing, and I'm guessing you're growing up when, like, late '90s, early 2000s, somewhere in yeah. there. Yeah, that was when yeah. I was. Yeah. Yeah, that's when my son, who does the podcast with me, that's when he was growing up too. Teen oh, Titans, right. his favorite cartoon. 
forever. I mean, we watched that. He was pretty little when it came out, but still to this day, his favorite cartoon. Well, and it was so dark. Like there yeah. were so many dark elements to it, and that and they tackled so many, you know, topics in a, in a way that was still like kids were able to understand in a way, right? It was it was it was really cool that way. You know, they when they it was funny. You yeah, know, it, 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 it the writing was really good on it. Yeah, it had everything. Didn't Ron Perlman play uh, Slade? Didn't he do voice Slade for that? That sounds familiar. I mean, I could Google it right now. I yeah, yeah, I think it was. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it was, yeah, it sounds about right. Was uh, Ron? But I, I always, I was always a Deathstroke fan. I was a comic book guy growing up, and I thought that was a really good version of him. They did a good job with him. Yeah, yeah. There aren't very many good versions of him, I think. Like, there's a couple. No. Yeah, that's like. the one I always liked. Yeah. But, I, but yeah. I always enjoyed Justice League was another one. That was an underrated cartoon. Hmm. It wasn't like when I grew up, it was the Super Friends. Right. Which I loved it for for its own way, but it wasn't nearly the, the story writing that you got with uh, Justice League. Justice League was like reading the comics. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. I, I and then and then you branch into Justice League Unlimited. Yeah. Which is like let's have like hundreds of heroes now and we can assign them and you get to know all of those people. Right. And it was just, it just, you know, in a lot of shows that I used to watch, it was like, okay, it centers around a couple of characters. Yeah. Right? Whereas that show basically was like, here is this entire world and we're not going to be shy in introducing you to basically as many people in this world as possible, which I really appreciated. Right. This was before the Marvel cinematic universe. And That's all. right. So yeah, that was the first time we really started to get introduced to the non-main characters. Yeah, yeah, for, for one yeah. of the you know DC or Marvel. Marvel's mm -hmm. kind of taking it now. They're doing it with their live-action stuff. They're introducing yeah. all these characters yeah. that maybe casual fans won't know. But DC was doing it cartoon. I always said DC's cartoon game much better than Marvel's, but the yeah. reverse is also true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's true. Have you seen Young Justice? Oh yeah, love Young Justice. It's one of my favorite shows still to this day. Like it's, yeah, I was, it, but we were Brett and I were very excited when it came back out. Yeah, I was happy about that too. And they're still making more, I think. I think like, so. I've seen on Twitter like a couple of comments about it in articles, but we we've been disappointed they didn't bring back Titans. I mean, they they gave you the Tiny Titans or whatever, which which is fun in in its own way, but it's not the same show. No, it's not the same. But I loved how they added in the old they paid homage there was a couple of episodes oh, yeah. where they brought them back and i watched those episodes just to kind of yeah we did the same yeah but yeah pretty uh pretty good so if if you had the chance to voice one of those characters from young justice justice league teen titans who would it have been i've said this on another podcast i would love a shot at nightwing well, i like the one nightwing. that was all our favorite you know yeah. dick grayson uh, that's the one yeah, right. Someone from the Bat family would be fun to do. I think they're all taken at this point, but, but under, yeah, there must be something. You know, it's yeah. I mean, there's like ten Robins. Yeah, there's a lot. <laughs> oh, and every other animated Batman movie that I'll watch, like, oh, there's another Robin. Oh, that's a different Robin, right? This is all these. Yeah. Now there, there's there's a new Superman one out on uh, Adult Swim now. Yeah, yeah. I think that was just announced a couple of weeks ago. I think. Yeah. Yeah. No. I'm okay with it. Just keep them coming. I mean, I've yeah. been disappointed in DC's movies, although I saw The Flash. I thought it was pretty good. Okay, yeah. yeah. Just seeing it. Michael Keaton back in the costume, that's worth it. Yeah, I I really want it. I, I love the ones where they're like, they, they do the cameos. Like, I don't know too, too much about it. Like, I don't watch trailers anymore. Yeah, I don't I, watch I, too many of them either. I just, I like to be surprised when I get there. Yeah. Um, You know, I mean, I've watched uh, the Spider-Verse twice in, in theaters, the new yeah. one. Pretty good. Second one, pretty good. So good. It, it made it makes me really happy and i i want to talk about it but i don't know in terms of spoiler land like what i'll be hinting at so well you just have to say spoilers okay and spoilers. Then, yeah yeah and then I, they can pause if they need to yeah okay gotcha yeah yeah uh, i didn't even think of that um, <laughs> i i i uh i really liked it it was a lot of fun um yeah it was it was it was the pacing was really nice nice to it and they they, they had a lot of really fun easter eggs like i'm still the second time that I watched it, uh, I, f I picked up on things that I didn't notice yeah. the first time. And I want to watch it a third time for that reason. Like, well, that, yeah, you have to watch it multiple times because the first time you're just listening to dialogue. 
you know, yeah. so the second yeah. third time you can actually pay attention to what's going on you know in the background and and really try to pick that stuff out yeah they've done it that's those movies those spider-verse movies probably marvel's best animated offering it was it was so yeah i i although I, what if i don't know if you watched what if that was pretty good i liked what if i didn't mind what if i thought you know i think that's a really cool concept and i love how they they've basically reset everything now mm -hmm. so that like anything is possible so they're never going to run out of ideas because of all of the multiverse and all the different universes and all excuse me all of that stuff so it'll be exciting to see where they take things yeah like i'm excited for the second season of what if you know we went to oh i am too we went to a convention it's been a year or two back and it was pretty loaded with with stars you know uh, actors and there was a lot of them and most of them were just kind of sitting at their table maybe have one or two people at the table and stuff and there was one table you couldn't even see who was at the table all you could see was the line yeah it was wrapping around going out into the hallway and when we finally got up close enough to figure out who it was it was um it was voice actors from dragon ball z yeah yeah. And I was that kind of, at the time that kind of shocked me, but it doesn't really shock me anymore. People love those cartoons. I mean, because they grew up, especially the ones that were kids when they were first coming out. I mean, they love those things. And, yeah, and it survived the test of time. Like they're still making more. I know. Popular I know. it is. It's yeah. I mean, that was one of the things that I grew up on. Right when yeah. I was when I was what, Friday nights. Friday did nights. that help you like when you when you voice like for kingdom or, or one of the animes did, did that help you growing up on that stuff you know as far as bringing the gravitas to the role uh it was uh you know i to to an to an extent yeah um you know just i'm back in the day i would watch a lot of animation just because i enjoyed it um but then i would also draw inspiration from a lot of the shows that i i watched when i was a kid and that's how yeah. i kind of started to develop my my range of characters and my vocal range and and all of that stuff but even to this day like i still watch um when i have time at the very least clips clips of different anime series yeah. animated series just so that i can get an idea and a feel for what's going on right like i mean another great example is arcane there's an animated series Ooh. on Netflix yeah. called Arcane, and they spent a couple of years i think making that like a, a longer than they normally would but it, I, I watch it. You watch it. The performances are so nuanced, and yeah. I just feel. I mean, I can't predict this sort of thing, but I just feel like that kind of animation style is is gonna kind of revolutionize the industry in a bit, similar to how Spider Verse has as well. Um, yeah. You know, people are gonna want to start to to imitate stuff like that. I know it's kind of exciting. I yeah. I love all the like like. Um... Yeah, when I was growing up, I was a big uh, Dungeon and Dragons guy. Yeah, for, yeah, D and D. Yeah. You know, and now you're getting like at uh, Vox Machina, you're getting some actual, you know, uh, role playing game type of anime, and it's really good. So good, and they're not afraid to go there. Like I, I just finished the first two seasons of Vox Machina a couple of months ago. Yeah, and on on Amazon, and it's pretty like, good. Just, it's really good, and they're not afraid to. They're not afraid to they're they're fearless in yeah. the way that they tell their story right and right because sometimes you watch a show and it's like yeah it kind of feels like you're walking on eggshells a little bit but that show they're just like nope we're going we're going there we're not we're not afraid to go there i know so, and I'm, I'm glad they do because it's it's well uh well done and actually the comic books are are really well done if you mm -hmm. ever check those out the stories are are really good with those two so so you play uh or you voice uh timber spruce for my little pony i do i do yeah have you been to a like a brony convention i've done a couple i've yeah. done a couple how how did those go because that's one I've, I've never done but i'm always appreciative of anybody that has a passion for just kind of nerdy stuff so what yeah. are those conventions like um they're very chaotic yeah <laughs> <laughs> crazy um and i've done a couple of anime conventions too over the years um but but the nothing so far anyways in my experience compares to a my little pony convention um <laughs> with a bunch of bronies and just fans of that show running around yeah. it's very chaotic but in a good way uh, it's quite crazy 
Um, but I also, I think, you know, people ask me about the fandom in that community a lot, uh, because I got an opportunity to connect with a lot of the members of the community over sure. COVID because we did so many online cons. Right. Like I just did it from here. And they asked me, would you do it? And I'm like, well, I'm not doing anything else. Like I'm having right. my house in weeks. Like I might as well, yes. you know, spend some time. Right. So it, you know, it gave me purpose. Uh, and it made their, it made the community really happy, but it also really helped me, you know, get yeah. through a really tough time. And so, uh, you know, what I say, just to go back to your question is, you know, there's such an accepting and welcoming community. Um, and it's done a lot for the LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. It's done a lot for um, just spreading love and joy and good vibes. Right. Yeah. Um, and so it's a really, it's a really, um, just a really welcoming community. They're all really, really fun. Like I remember um, it was somewhere in somewhere I, I was somewhere and I, I'm, I'm walking through like a, a common area that's away from the actual convention. Yeah. And I just run into a group of, a group of them and they're just hanging out in the corner and they all just start um, coming up to me and talking to me. Right. And, and, and that's just fun. Um, yeah. It's just well, that's fun. the great thing about, you know, fandoms is 90% of the people are amazing. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. just good people. I mean, you get a couple of, uh, you know, ones that are, that are kind of rough and or maybe yep. overstep their boundaries or, or whatever. But it, it, for the most part, that's the reason those conventions, you know, anybody that's never been to them, they should try, you know, whatever it is, it doesn't have to be a my little pony, but whatever convention is, cause they're just, the fans are great and they're very polite. They are, you know, they're, they're just, and it's their way of like a lot of them dress up. Right. Yeah. And it's just their way of expressing themselves and it's fun. You know, it's, it's, and they're also so creative. Like I've, I've been given so much fan art of my character <laughs> yeah. and it's just I mean, it's great. You no, know, it's like, yeah, it's really cool. I have, I have a stack at home that I need to sort through still um, of stuff that has been given to me. You know, it's a really kind group, kind community. I had a, I ran a couple of comic book stores back in the nineties. So I did a lot of conventions back then, but back then so different than the way they are now, because it was only about the writers and the artists back then. There was no, you know, there was no uh, celebrity guests or voice guests. You know, it was all just the comic book people. And there were, I mean, being honest, there was no uh, dress up and not many women either. It was mostly guys. So it's been a, a, a good development that it's so much uh, more inclusive, diverse and fun. You know, there's so much more to do nowadays and you still got the comic book guys if that's your thing they're still there yep. you know and they're much easier to get to now because they're not the main attraction so the lines aren't as long so those they're those guys are still great to talk to but i've always enjoyed that you know over the 30 years that progression that we've seen at the conventions because they're just i mean they're monsters now back then they were all kind of tiny yeah they're like i'll i'll hear from friends and colleagues that are like yeah i just went to a con that was 25 30 50 60 70,000 people yeah. <laughs> whoa you know like that's a lot of people you know and and yeah it's is it's there definitely... is there anyone out there that you would stand in line for hours to get their autograph or a picture whatever it is there's a couple of voice actors that come to mind i mean um i'd love to meet I'd love to meet Steve Bloom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he'd be a great one. I've heard nothing but good things. Yeah. About how welcoming and accepting he is mm -hmm. and just how like genuine and and humble, you know. Um, and so that that's I think those are just really good qualities to have as an artist and 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 he's just so you know, I've 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 heard a lot of good stories, basically. But you know, we've had a a bunch of uh, uh voiceover actors on the show. They've all been great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they're just the best. Yeah, I think I think there's something. If you're making, you know, basically silly voices for a living, how could you be in a bad mood? <laughs> it's just so much fun, man. Like, it's just, like, it's just, there's just so much joy. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I was welcomed with open arms into the voice community in Vancouver, you know, 10 years ago. 
Yeah. Uh, you know, they everyone is everyone is just so welcoming, you know, and, you know, you know, of course, you still got to respect boundaries. Right. But but like, yeah, I haven't had a lot of, uh, you know, the vast, vast majority of my experiences with the voice acting community in Vancouver and in other parts of the world has been overwhelmingly positive. Yeah, right? that's, that's awesome. Something. That's yeah. awesome. So my uh, uh, my granddaughter is let's see, she's three, three and a half, let's say. So her her mother has been she's big into Barbies right now. So her mother's been watching the Barbie videos. And I always play that game with the kids when I have somebody on the show. I'm like, what have you seen this person in? So mm -hmm. for her, she said, we just watched this video and she saw your name voice in one of the Barbie characters. <laughs> yeah, so I, yeah, I don't know this is true, but I'm assuming you have done a Barbie video at some point. It was one of my first jobs. I did. Uh, I played Prince Delphin in a in a direct to DVD Barbie film. Yep. And, and I made a feature film. Yeah. Uh, Prince Delphin. He was a mer prince. Uh, what That's right. Name? That's what she said. Yeah. That's what she yeah. said. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was that one was pretty neat because I didn't know that one. But yeah, she, I, I forget. Yeah, <laughs> being honest with you, like come and clean now. Like I, I forget. What's well, probably know. been what 10, 12 years ago, something like that. You recorded that in like two thousand and thirteen. Yeah, I think it was 2012, 2013. I mean, it's hard to believe, but it's already been ten years. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while, right? It came out in two thousand fourteen. I think is when it came out. Um. And the and the they they've given they gave as was so kind of them they gave me a DVD Blu-ray copy of the film, uh, nice. and they also gave me a, a doll, um, but it Ooh. wasn't a character it was just a, one of the one of the Barbies, and you look on eBay now and like what they're going for and you're like, I know can't I know. even imagine my mother has got the original Barbie. Oh, right, right, like, right. You know, yeah. like in the box. I mean, it's been played with, but she still has the box. She's got all the clothes, all that. But it's from the 50s. Right. And I always tell her, I was like, Mom, you should probably just get rid of that. Get you some money. That's that's worth some money, but she won't do it. Well, I get it. I, I understand. I mean, I understand both sides to it. It's, yeah, I get it. Well, I was, a, I was always a collector growing up, and I'm sure it's from her. You know, I'm <laughs> sure that came from uh, her. So I get it, too. Right. But, but. You know she's she's pushing eighty now, so maybe it's gotcha. to, yeah, to, no, that's to, fair. To that's cash fair. in, <laughs> that's totally fair. <laughs> so so we saw you uh, on uh, um, Wayward Pines. Yeah, you were the radio guy. Yeah, I did an episode. That was of that. that was like the uh, it was the brothers' other project, other than Stranger Things. That we always loved. Same same people making that one that made Stranger Things, and we always loved that show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a. I, uh, I haven't seen too too much of Wayward Pines, mm -hmm. um, but but I definitely remember, um, watching the episode that I was involved in just because it was that was actually my first on camera. Really, it was Wayward. Well, yeah, yeah, it was. It was the first one that made it made the cut. Um, right. I had done previous projects that I just didn't make the cut, right? And I was just starting out, so I was doing smaller stuff at the time, you know, on camera. Um, and that was a cool, that was a cool couple of days on set because the entire cast was so, yeah, welcoming as well. Like I, I know that I feel like every single thing that I've said so far has been everyone's so welcoming, but as it's true, like in this in this scenario, right? Like, was it um, season one or season two that you're on? Season two. That's what I thought. So it was uh who was that? Jason Patrick was the star for season two. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Matt Dillon for season one. Does that sound right? And then Jason Patrick for season two. I don't I don't recall meeting him on, on the set. Um, but it may have changed things may have changed. He may have been involved. I can't yeah. quite remember. Yeah, I know, I know. It's been a while since we watched too, but I always thought it was a quality show and it's based on a series of books that I understand are pretty popular. But I was disappointed because I thought they could have done a season three and just well, we, I think everyone was thinking that they were going to. Yeah, we did too. That was the that was the idea. And like um, you know, what I saw of of the shot. I mean, I got to work with um Jennifer Lynch. Oh yeah. This, this big sci-fi horror director, right? And she was awesome. Um, and so just, you know, like you never know. 
when you're a day player on a, on a, in, in film and TV or even in even in animation, right? Back when we used to record ensemble, I mean, we still do occasionally. Uh, you never know when you're going in for a couple of days, right? You're like the new kid on the block. <laughs> you don't know how you're going to be received, right? So like I always just kind of keep to myself, um, you know, unless I get invited over to to do something, yeah. uh, you know, with the rest of the cast, right? Because like everyone knows each other and they've been working together for a while and you're coming in for a couple of days to just kind of help out and move the story along essentially in the episode. Right. So, right. but but they were all really, they were they were just great. They were just fun to work with. You know, really yeah, great. I could see where that could be difficult because especially if you're going on a show that's been out for a while, you know yeah. they've already got chemistry. Yeah, that's true. So it would be easy for them to not be as welcoming. Mm -hmm. so that's good for them that they made you feel welcome because you don't want everybody coming in. To, you know you're going to have guest stars every week. You know, if you're kind of uh, uh, aloof to your guest stars, probably not going to be great for the show. So I, that's good that they were it was. Welcoming. It was really fun. It was fun to do. When you you made an appearance on Supergirl, so you've hit. You're technically in the DC universe. I guess you know what you're right. I never even thought of it that way, because <laughs> I'm so focused on the animation side of DC, right? Like I don't even think yeah. about a live action. Yeah, no, I guess so. Yeah. yeah they yeah. needed. I think your character's name was Doug. Doug needed some Doug. powers. Yeah, I thought you know, I I love that they named him Doug. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, that's a cool name. Uh you know, I think uh yeah, that was that was a fun couple of days too. Um I didn't really shoot with anyone. I think that most of my scenes were just me. Yeah. Oh. Uh that what, could be good I, or bad. Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's a scene where I'm running through the a hallway and basically, but all you see is my face on a screen communicating to someone. Right. But that person isn't actually there on the day. Right. <laughs> down the barrel of the camera, like speed walking um, frantically. Right. To relay the information um, to, to basically move the, the story along. And um, yeah, you, you got to do that on your own. Right. There's there's there wasn't anyone there. Right. It was just me. Right. I'm guessing there... Supergirl films in Vancouver. We've had uh, several actors on that have guest starred mm -hmm. on Supergirl. Yeah. And they've all been from Vancouver. So I'm like, must be filming there. Yeah. Yeah, we filmed Supergirl here. We did. I think it's done now. Um, it is. Uh, Most of the CW superhero shows they got rid of. Yeah, a lot of them are done. I think Superman and Lois is still going. Yeah, it, it may be the only one. Yeah, yeah but I know there. Yeah, Flash and Arrow are done. And, yeah, Yeah, because we were super excited. Like when uh, Arrow, I think, was the first one when it came out. Yeah, yeah well, I watched the, the comic movie. book stuff, so we, we jumped in. And they were, honestly, Arrow, Flash, Supergirl, they were all really good for a season or two and then it got a little redundant i think the uh um, the you know their formula is very teenage angst type of formula mixed yep. in with some super powered stuff and there's only so far i think you can take that yeah you know i think eventually you i mean again i'm not a writer so like again full respect to the writers but right. like i'm assuming you know it, it must be really challenging to come up with new fresh ideas yeah. season after season I mean, you go nine seasons it's like well what else are we going to do that's right well um, and and you still you got to make sure you're you know doing justice to the source material you don't want to you say. know so you got to do that but you also has to be unique and something new to catch people's attention that's not easy yeah 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 um you know actually i'm gonna i'm gonna quickly go back to your last question about who i'd like to meet yeah i'd love to meet henry cavill Henry Cavill would be a great oh, meet. Yeah. I'm watching The Witcher right now. I'm watching the third season. Me too. We, yeah, we've I'm... only seen the first one so far. The but it was season. good. It's really good. And I'm, is this his last go round this season? I think so. I mean, season three is being split into two parts, and I'm assuming he's going to be in the second part of season three. I'm uh, guessing at the end of it, something happens that, because my understanding is the new actor is going to be playing the same character. So maybe they do kind of like a doctor who type of thing where there there's some magic involved or something to change him. Yeah. I'm really curious to see how they do that. Yeah. I'm really too. curious Cause I, you know, I hope, and I hope they're able to tie it well together. I, I, you know, we'll see. I mean, he's so good in the role. He's so good. And he understands the source material, right? Yeah. Like he's aware of everything. He, you know, he's, he's been immersed in this world, not just as an artist and actor, but as a fan of the project. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a gamer, from what I understand. Yeah. He builds his own PC, PCs. 
Like I've, I've seen photos of it. It's crazy. He would, you know, I've never thought of that, but he would be a really good, that'd be a yeah. good person to meet. Cause he, yeah. he just seems like he just a, just a good guy. Yeah. He seems really genuine. Uh, yeah. Every time. Like he wow. seems like he might sit down and play a video game with you at any time. Yeah. And that'd be <laughs> dope. Right. Like that'd be fun to do, you know? And, and it's, cause for me, it's all about just like, okay, who, who, who would I want to hang out with? And who is, you know, just has, who's just like, you know, there's has to be a certain level of humility and just That's genuineness. Right. right? And, and there's no, like, I, I don't really have a lot of patience for, for people that, that are, I don't know. What's the word stuck up? I yeah. Guess. Well, you know, most stars kind of get it. They understand, you know, kind of the price of, of the fame is, is the fans. And they get that and they kind of take care of them. Not everybody does that. There's some rough ones out there. And those that have the same way, I'm just like, what is the matter with you? What'd you get into this for if you don't? <laughs> well, it's, you know, when I said this, I said this in the My Little Pony fandom community, I said, you know, it went nine seasons, a spinoff series, four spinoff movies, a giant animated feature theatrical release with yeah. a bunch of celebrities. Um and they kept the main cast too, which was nice. Um, you know, I, I I've reminded the community a couple of times when I've done like interviews and panels and conventions occasionally, um, especially the ones online. I've said, you know, if it wasn't for all of you, I wouldn't have had a job. It's it's just that right. that's that it's that simple because, you know, we had done I think six or seven seasons up at that point of Pony. I wasn't involved, but the reason why they did the spinoff series of Equestria Girls and the reason why they went I think nine seasons was because the community just kept it going, right? There right. was so much interest, right? So I mean, I said, nine seasons for a cartoon yeah. is a long life. It doesn't happen often, mm -mm. especially nowadays, right? With the amount of content that's out there. Not you know? unless you're The Simpsons or Family Guy. Yeah, like usually <laughs> shows only go two, three seasons now if you're lucky. Yeah. Um, is what I've been observing, so. Yeah, that's yeah. pretty, uh, yeah, that's pretty great. So, so what about the uh, the Lego Friends stuff that you're doing? Yeah, because this this uh, you're I, I think you're doing several voices for that, but it's a little different take on the normal Lego stuff. Am I right about that? It's um, I mean, I think one of the first iterations of Lego Friends, they it was Lego Friends, but all of the characters were animated as humans and not Lego figures. Yeah, now all of the characters are Lego figures. <laughs> which I think is kind of cool because I want my own little Lego character. Like I, I, yeah, you have, have you, you haven't playing. got it yet. Not yet. Uh, I have a friend that ordered me something and I have to pick it up. Um, okay. I think my friend found uh, uh, a Lego figure of one of my characters. His name is Nico. Um, and so I'm going to pick that up eventually. Is uh, Nico yeah. the, is he kind of the and bully might be a strong word, but he's kind of he, condescending. He's no, that's that's uh, that's um, what's his name? That's that's Brad. Oh, that's Brad. Brad is Brad is just a little bit more um, stuck up, but yeah. it comes from a place of insecurity, I think, right? It's not like a you know, might be fun to play, but it is fun to play, right? He has a lot to learn. Um, and then Nico is he's this soccer player jock dude, bro, oh, yeah. but he's actually a sweetheart and he's actually really friendly and kind and he accepts there's this new kid um named leo that shows up and basically he just gets accepted into the group and and nico is one of the people is one of the characters that does that um there's a couple of them that do it but he's one of them um and they quickly form a good you know relationship bond friendship whatever you want to call it um, well how's that work when you go in for a to to kind of read and a lot of that i know is done at home now but when you're reading for a for a, a you know a voice part how does it do they give you some instructions like this is what we're looking for for the character or do they just see what you can come up with sometimes uh, it's a bit of a it's a bit of both right yeah. depending on the character sometimes you'll have a full-on show bible to look at and you'll be able to you know you'll get the artwork you'll get and i love it when they send designs and artwork so you can yeah. kind of get an idea of the kind I of i would like that yeah, it just it just helps me visualize what I'm acting out, um, right? And every, different animated series have different styles and tones, right? right? And so it gives you an idea into the world. 
right? Because like how you audition for like a DC animated series is going to be very different from how you audition for like SpongeBob, right? Like two totally different worlds, right? And so right. looking at the animation and seeing the animation, uh, or at least a little bit of the animation, just a drawing really helps me anyways. Um, but they don't always give you those. Um, sometimes you only get like two sentence description and a bunch of lines and you got to make it up, make a choice and just go. Yeah. You don't really have the chance to do multiple tries. You got to just pick one, maybe two and go. Yeah. And, and back in the day when we used to record voice auditions in studio, right, where we used to go into the studio to audition, yeah. you know, we only got maybe two or three takes for character if we were lucky. Right. Um, because there was a finite amount of time, you know, put aside for every actor to come in to, to audition. Nowadays, the majority of the time we're recording our auditions from home, right? Like I'm in my studio right now. It looks like a shower, but it's a, it's a studio, I promise. I know. Um, I was, I was uh, looking. <laughs> it looks pretty nice, actually. Yeah. I'm assuming it's, that's, it's, uh, it's pretty soundproof. That's why you use it. It's great because during COVID, my uh, neighbors decided to turn their garage into a gym. So you hear, you know, and they're practicing, they're doing a bit of MMA, they're, they're, you know, banging the barbells against the concrete, they're blasting music, which is totally fine, right? You got to do what you got to do, That's especially right. in the pandemic. But it wasn't the most ideal for me <laughs> for my auditions. So I got this um, and it's been super great. I mean, I never expected to get a booth. Um, that was never part of the plan, you know, when yeah. I entered the business, but then COVID kind of changed everything. So yeah, COVID, uh, COVID changed a, a lot for everybody. And it, it, and I've always been honest about it. It was actually helpful to us as a podcast because everybody was at home looking for stuff to do. That's true. That's they, a good point. We didn't yeah. get a lot of no's during 2020. So that part was kind of nice. But yeah. I'd have given it up if we could have skipped all that. No, I feel that. I feel that. I feel the same way. Yeah. What's the, what's the like, the the hardest part of voice acting that nobody ever talks about. I mean, is there something that that is is kind of difficult that you wouldn't think about till you got into it and you're in that situation? I guess starting out, what was really challenging for me was just remembering to make the animation move. Um, and oh. what I mean by that is um, because unless we're dubbing anime or like dubbing an animated series that was originally aired in a different language and we're creating an English version, right. right? Other than that, if we're working in pre-lay original animation, uh, we're recording the lines first and then they animate to our performances after we record. And so just being mindful of, well, I have to give the animator something to animate to, right? I got to make the animation move. Yeah, that right? makes sense to me because you wouldn't think of that, but you're right. So do you do that with like inflection and... Uh, volume, that type of thing. Yeah, inflection, volume. Um, I'm really physical when I'm in the studio. Yeah. Um, I love talking with my hands. Um, so there's a lot of that. Um, you know, I never record sitting down. I always like recording standing up. I've had yeah. options. I've been offered, you can just sit down for this. And no, I, I like to use my whole body. That really helps me yeah. um, act, out, act out the scenes. I mean, in your head, when you're doing the voices, do you see the anime running through your head when you're doing the voices? I try to. Yeah. When I'm when I'm nowadays, when I'm preparing a script to before a recording session, I try to be really mindful and I try to visualize how they're going to animate it. Right. Like it's and again, when you're there on the day, it's such a collaborative effort. Right. And yeah. I'm going to come in with my ideas production the creative team is going to come in with their ideas and then we just basically collaborate and play around and see what works and what doesn't yeah i love that i think, I think that's uh, pretty great have you ever done like uh audiobooks i've wanted i've thought about getting into it i've yeah. auditioned for a couple i've never i've never worked on one and i think one of the reasons why i'm hesitant to to work on one is because of how much time yeah, it's it, time consuming. It's a lot, right? And so I, in terms of my schedule with with all the other things that I'm doing, voice acting and on-camera acting wise, it's just right now, it doesn't really work with my schedule, but I mean, who knows? I mean, I might be doing one next year for all we know. I, I don't know. Yeah, so. I, I always, uh, I'm impressed, I think, with, with people that can do that because you're basically just reading a book 
but you're yeah. you got to do all the different voices and stuff. I think that would be really hard. It's well, and I think too over the course of an entire novel, right? Depending on how many pages it is, yeah, you got to sustain that character over the entire right book, right? And so you got to make sure that all your characters, like I know some people that record audiobooks, they have little character lists, like they have a little character bible that they make so that they are aware and mindful of who each character is, right? As they that's smart. Grow. You got to switch, right? Go back and forth, back yeah, and forth. Yeah, that's smart. So, yeah. Well, yeah, and there's no way. I mean, you know, these days, I'm lucky if I can sit still for an hour and read, way. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I used to be a really big reader, but it's just, I just my eyes can't handle it. It's just about an hour is about all I can handle. But if you're doing that book, I mean, you're probably in there for several hours at a time or you'd never get it finished. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 definitely really time consuming from what I've been told. Um, and that's the only reason why I've hesitated over the years is to is just because, you know, how would you make that work with with the schedule? So, yeah, never say never. Never say never. I saw that you uh, made an appearance on Family Law. Is is that the Canadian version of like Law and Order, NCIS? I mean, it's like a law that if you're in Canada, you have to be on that show. Uh so it does take place in Vancouver, which is kind of cool. We don't get a lot of shows that take place actually yeah. in Vancouver. Um, I don't believe that episode is out yet. Oh, it's uh, not out yet. Okay, okay. yeah. Well, I, yeah, because we don't get that yeah. yet in the States. It's, I mean, it's loaded. No. You can recognize everybody on the show, but yeah, we don't get that yet. I think it might be on the CW moving really? forward. Really? Yeah. All right, I, I'll I, check it out. I saw something there, but I can't be sure. Um, but it is doing really well. Um, yeah, it's a good show for everything that I've uh, heard. And we've had a ton of people on that have made an appearance. Yeah. Like, well, I said, it's kind of like Law and Order. If you're an, an actor in New York, at some point you're going to be on that show. Yeah. yeah. It's been on for so long and they're needing, you know, people every week or NCIS if you're out in L.A. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, it, that, that's the beauty of shows going multiple seasons, right? Yeah, there's going to be a lot more opportunity for everyone, and that's always yeah. a good thing. Right? That's always I just want everyone to be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I want everyone to be working. That's right. Everybody needs a job. Let's get everybody this writer strike settled. Let's get everybody back. Uh, on. Yeah, my best to them. It's it's wild, you know. And yeah. bravo to I them mean, for just standing. take care of the writers. Yeah, I mean, you can't do anything without them. Just take care of. No, them. no, I I I could never even attempt to do what they do. No. Me either. They're, I don't have that type of mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, a lot of us are nothing without, without scripts. Like, yeah, we can improv, but, but like, you know, they're the, they're the ones that basically help us sound good. Like we, there's nothing more satisfying when you read a script and you go, yeah, this is good. This is, this is so it's tight, right? Yeah. It's, it's tight and specific and succinct. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Brian, thank you so much for taking some time. I was so excited to talk with you because I love the anime stuff. I love the cartoons. You know, I was, right. I'm still, I'm 53 years old and I'm still, you know, love to sit down and watch cartoons, especially the ones I grew up on. Yeah, it's it's nostalgic. I do the same. I'll watch know, I may not pay 100% of attention, but I love having them on in the background. Yeah, it's it's just nice ambience. It's good. I, I'm the yeah. same way. Yeah, yeah it's and pretty good. Having well, yeah, Brian, you got to come back uh, anytime. This has been well, terrific. A um, couple little things, though, before we wrap. Um, anything else that you're working on that we can look at or kind of keep an eye out for? Um, keep an eye out uh, on YouTube. Lego Friends episodes are dropping every, I think, a couple times a month. That's awesome. Um, and I'm on a couple of projects right now that haven't been released yet, so I can't talk about, but I'm really excited. Are, the, are they... Uh, like voice projects or actually yeah, they're all they're all voice projects okay very good all voice projects, yeah very good yeah it's funny because even though you know if you're a voice actor and you 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 change your voice for every character once you know fans figure out who you are they'll recognize your voice even though you're changing it yeah yeah that does happen you yeah. know which i think is kind of neat because that's a fan you know if you're taking the time to realize this this is what this guy sounds like even when he's doing different voices that's a pretty good fan and i take that as a compliment yeah like, you know, like that's you know you're you're taking an interest in the stuff that i do and and you know i want to i want to help make people's day 
as well when I do these, right? Like it's, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what a job. You know, cartoons are the best. I, they are. And it's just such a joy. Like it's, it's so, it's just fun. It's yeah. just fun. Like I, I don't have, a, I don't know how else to describe it. Right. It just, it just, you know, anytime I get to go into the studio, it's just a gift. It's just such a gift. Love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, so, okay. So the last thing, Brian, uh, where can we find you on social media? Oh, uh, at Brian Dochua on, so B R I A N D O E C H U A on Twitter and Instagram for right now. Very good. Yeah. That's, that's really all you need. Yeah. For it. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing TikTok, but we'll see. Oh yeah. That one's scary. It's just a lot, right? You got to stay consistent. So, well, you've got, but you've got voice talent. You could do that. You know, otherwise you got to get on there and dance. (laughs) Yeah. And I can't dance. I have 16 left feet, buddy. I can't, I could never do it. I know. Same way. Theater, but I couldn't, I couldn't dance. I'm not, it's not my thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Brian. Let's definitely, let's do this again at some point. I love that. This was so chill. Like, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You're so welcome. Okay, hold on one second. Brian Do Chua. I think I got that right. Uh, hope so. He's such a, a terrific guy. Just a really nice, good person really happy to to have him on the show and he's super talented and you've probably heard him voicing uh some characters that that you or your your children love and just didn't realize it was uh brian and i think we hit on a bunch of them we didn't talk about polly pocket he played uh chad on uh polly pocket and then he pay, played uh, nico and brad on lego friends so keep an eye out for that, I love him on uh, Kingdom, which is an anime. I think, I think might be on HBO, but don't uh, or Max now. But don't uh, don't hold me to that. But but he's really good on that uh, on that anime. He plays Ying, really good job. Um, and if you've ever like check out his social media, he'll put clips up once in a while of of him voicing characters. Pretty amazing really talented guy and i think a good actor as well he should do more on camera stuff i think he does uh, a really good job with it if you're finding us for the first time and you enjoyed it thank you so much for joining us um we could use your support it's easy it's free all we ask is that you subscribe if you if you prefer to watch our youtube channel is meistercon pod just hit subscribe really help us out If you prefer to listen, wherever you listen to your podcast at, just subscribe there. That'll help us out as well. Today, we put out episode 606, no, 617. You can find all of those audio and video on our website, meistercon.com. And that'll also let you know if we're doing anything in studio, if we're going on location, you know, if we're covering a convention. That'll be uh, on the website, meistercon.com. So definitely check us out there. Recently, we were named one of the top podcasts on IMDB, which is the entertainment database, which is a big deal for us. We are number 82. The majority of those ahead of us are the major tentpole companies like uh, Disney uh, with Marvel and you know, or, uh, Joe Rogan, those type of shows. So, you know, a little... Small town father and son team, we are thrilled to death to be number uh, 82. So please, if you're on uh, IMDb, please go check out our page. It's under Two Opinionated. Click on that. That uh, that gives us support uh, support as well. So please check us out there. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. In May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel, and we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume, for just a uh, father and son operation. 
you know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views, but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, Look up the Two Opinionated Podcast and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple of easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch because I think that our, our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there. If you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world, you know, we've got producers, directors, um video artists, anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes, we've had them on the show. So definitely check us out. Thank you guys so, so much. Until next time. Bye, everybody.